Good morning, everyone. It's Wake Up Wednesday. And oh, wasn't it great to wake up this morning to temperatures in the low 70s? You're going, hey, wait a minute. That's kind of warm for an overnight temperature. Well, it is, but hey, it felt great this morning compared to the high 80s we had yesterday afternoon in that hot sun. Whoa. I don't know if that's what you had where you were, but that's what we had. Hey, how you like those water irises behind me? Aren't they beautiful? Always great this time of year. Um, hey. What do we have going here for our Wake Up Wednesday scripture? Well, it's the epistle lesson that's for this Sunday, which is Pentecost Sunday, and it talks all about spirit. It comes from the book of Romans, the 8th chapter, and my 8th chapter has a little title above it, which is something that was added in by later editors, uh, Life in the Spirit. And it is. It talks about how God's spirit works in our lives. And this is just a short little snippet of that chapter and I want to read it for you because you have to hear it in order to understand what we're about to say okay starting with verse 14 for all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God for you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear but you've received a spirit of adoption when we cry Abba Father it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. So it's kind of a heavy bit of language going on there. In fact, a lot of Paul, especially in the book of Romans, it's got a lot of heavy theological emphasis to it important stuff but sometimes a little tough for us to understand so you have to really throw yourself back in 2000 years ago to where paul was in his culture which is the roman empire and this is especially where the church that he's writing to right now is beginning to emerge he's planning to make a, a journey there he's never been there it's not one that he started but it's growing it's growing okay so so what about these verses that are so important that you just had to read it um okay first of all let's go back to the very thing at the beginning for the, all who are led by the spirit are children of god literally it's sons of god now i'm reading from the new revised standard version and they're trying to be gender inclusive so it's not just sons it's daughters too I, yeah and that's well and fine except here here it's important to keep the masculine there and you're going oh you sexist person what are you trying to do you know trying to downplay the role of women again no because in the book of romans women lead big chunks of the church throughout rome mm -hmm. uh but that's not what's going on here it's very important you keep sons in there and why because later on you're going to be talking about adoption being adopted into the family of god and that was a very important thing for the Roman people because if a family and especially a well-to-do family was just rolling along and had all kind of kids but they were all daughters and no sons it's only the sons who could carry on the business and all the all the things that the father had been doing only the son could do that and so if there's no son basically the name of that family just gets washed away into history. It's gone forever. So it was important to have a son. What do you do? What do you do if you don't have a son? You go out and find one and you adopt that person. You adopt that male as your own son. That's just the way it was in society. Women still did not have a real high ranking in society. It had to be the son who would take over the father's business so what Paul is saying is you have been adopted in as sons you are taking over the father's business here on this earth now what's interesting a little bit later on you heard me say the word children again that's a different word for children and in fact Paul now is being inclusive and he's remembering all these women who are leading different parts of the church not only there in Rome but all across the Roman Empire. So, no, he's not being sexist. He's pointing to a very particular aspect of Roman culture, so keep that in mind. But one other thing that's really neat in this um, 
little section that we just read is the fact that in our English translations, we also miss out on another very important uh, thing that's happening in the Greek text, which is what this originally was written in. And that is the word ko. Well, there's no word ko that, that shows up in here. Well, it does in the Greek, and it's attached to um, verbs all along and, be, and when it becomes attached to a verb it now becomes in a sense a noun and I will point it out to you as I read it once again this very last part of the uh, passage okay it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit bearing witness co-witnessing so it's with us okay the spirit is co-witnessing with us um, and if children then heirs heirs of God and joint heirs co-heirs literally co-heirs if in fact we suffer with him co-suffer with him that we also might be glorified with him co-glorified with him you see the intimacy that's involved in all the Greek language here the spirit is right there with us in us working through us because we are linked together in a very close intimate way it's not just something that comes zipping in and out of our lives no with us all the time awesome passage a very good one to hang on to and remember that god is always with us every step of the way because now we're infused with that spirit we are uniquely and intimately connected with one another Okay, the sunlight's bursting through the clouds right now. You can see it in my face. It's glorious, it's beautiful, it's warm. But we do have some thunderstorms rising up later on in the day. So, got to get ready for that too. God's blessings be with you as you move your way through this beautiful Wake Up Wednesday.